descriptive nonfiction text structure is one of the five text structures that we are going to be diving a little bit deeper into. So first things first, make sure that you have a copy of your notes so that you can follow along. Defining descriptive nonfiction text structures. This is where the author dives deeper into describing a topic by listing characteristics, features, attributes, and examples. The purpose of a descriptive text structure is to inform about a specific topic. It's just one single topic. And it's organized by characteristics, features, or attributes. So sometimes if it's a longer passage, the subheadings will each be some detail about the idea or the topic. Some of the key words that you might see are, for example, such as, for instance, including specifically characteristics of, moreover, features to illustrate, and in fact, and I'm sure there are more. If you take a look, there is a graphic organizer that we will be using to help us dissect a, a passage. So if it's a descriptive passage, you're going to use this diagram and we are going to use this short little passage about slots. Sloths are furry, tree-dwelling mammals that have many interesting characteristics. For example, their fur patterns make their eyes appear sad, but makes their face look like they are smiling. Sloths are best known for other characteristics, such as their deep, such as their sleep pattern and movement. Sloths sleep at an Sloth sleeps an incredible 20 hours per day. When they finally wake, they move very slowly. They do all this to conserve energy. If you've never seen a sloth, you might think it looks scary with its long claws. However, you shouldn't be frightened. Sloths are harmless creatures that only eat plants, twigs, and leaves. If you want to see wild sloths, you can find them living in the canopy of the rainforests in Central and South America. The first thing I picked out is what they look like. So I noticed that they used words like furry, eyes appear sad, long claws. I didn't highlight it because I know that in my circle it's pretty small but they also look like they're smiling. So these are things that, this is how they look. So I'm gonna add these to my graphic organizer. So they look like furry and animals with sad looking eyes and long claws. So that's a detail about a sloth. What's another detail that we saw about sloths? Yeah, how about they sleep 20 hours per day and they're very slow? I mean, 20 hours a day is a lot. So I'm gonna go ahead and fill in this information into the next little bubble. So I put in there, they move very slowly and sleep a lot. How about the next piece of detail? I notice what they eat. They eat plants, twigs, and leaves. There we go. They only eat plants, twigs, and leaves. So I'm gonna take this information, put it in the next bubble. 
just like that. And lastly, I noticed that they live high in the canopy of the rainforest in Central and South Americas. So I'm going to go ahead and add that to my graphic organizer as well. I would like to say that even though our graphic organizer only has four details, I could easily add another bubble and state that they look like they're smiling as well. So oftentimes, yes, this graphic organizer has four features or four details, but if you have more in a passage, you can keep adding bubbles off of the main bubbles. The next thing we are going to do is define what a descriptive text is down at the bottom. So if you notice at the bottom, you have a little space that says descriptive text. And if you flip your paper over, you should see the definition. But I'll also notice at the top of the screen, it tells me that a descriptive text describes a topic, idea, person, or thing by giving specific information about it. And specific information is details. So go ahead and put that in your blank. Describes a topic, idea, person, or thing by giving specific information or by giving details. And then what were some of the signal words? Some of the signal words that we saw. Well, we have, for example, in addition, specifically, for instance, such as is like, looks like, sounds like, smells like, feels like, tastes like, etc. There's a long list of signal words. Anytime it's doing something to describe it, that's a good signal word. And now it is your turn.